marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. I'm gay. Well, I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report. It is April 17th, 2023. I hope that you had a great weekend. We had a storm hit Miami last night from about 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. That was the craziest electric lightning storm I've ever seen in my entire life. We had a dog going bananas. We had babies crying, cats and dogs. It was nuts. So I'm a little fatigued this morning, but I have caffeinated and I am ready to roll. We got a tremendous program for you. And we have a uh, post-game wrap up over at rubenreport.locals.com exclusively for paid subscribers if you want to join us over there. And the theme today is that it is time, whether you like it or not, to usher in a new political era. This this binary that we've been working off of, this left versus right, Democrat versus Republican thing, it's not working. It's not working. We all know it's not working. It's making everybody crazy. And we actually have a chance right now for many reasons, partly related to the internet, partly related to old institutions dying. We actually have a chance to usher in something much better, something that will be in line with, uh, I think, what you are, if I dare call you a freedom lover. Uh, And there's a bunch of those decent liberal types who are starting to wake up to it. And I think they could be a key piece in how we get to the other side of all of this stuff. And uh, frankly, I've had enough of letting the crazy people run the asylum. It's time the sane people took over. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Before we do, let me talk to you guys about Moink Box real quick. You guys know that 60% of US pork production comes from one company owned by the Chinese, and their hogs are given something called ractopamine, which is banned in 160 countries, including China, yet you find it in your grocery aisle every day. Well, there's a better way, guys. Let me tell you about Moink, that is moo plus oink. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. You choose the meat delivered in every box, like ribeyes to chicken breasts to pork chops to salmon fillets and much more. Plus, you can cancel any time. There's nothing better than cooking their meats on my big green egg on a Friday evening, which I did on a Saturday evening this weekend. Shark Tank host Kevin O'Leary called Moink's bacon the best bacon he's ever tasted, and they guarantee you'll say, oink, oink, I'm just so happy I got moinked. Keep American farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash Ruben right now, and you'll get free filet mignon in every order for a year. That's one of the best filet mignon you'll ever taste, uh, but only for a limited time. M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Ruben, moinkbox.com slash Ruben, and now back to me. Okay, so let's dive right into it. Uh, You've heard of this fella, Bill Maher. I talk about him uh, quite often on this show, and the main reason, as you know that I do, is because I think he represents something that's sort of bigger than Bill Maher, the man himself. Bill Maher, the man himself, may never get to the other side. I'm going to keep working on him. I really will. He may never get there. But the people that he's talking to, the somewhat sane, non-woke libs who are factory-setting Democrats, but who have started to wake up to the woke stuff, who are realizing that places like Florida are not places to fear, but actually are the places that are defending your purported liberal values. I think those are the people that we can actually convince. I have no doubt that some of you are those very people. And on his show every week, something happens that strengthens uh, that argument. So uh, Congresswoman Katie Porter from California, she's a progressive lefty from California. She was one of the guests on the panel over the weekend. Uh, She was on there with Piers Morgan. Of course, you guys know who Piers Morgan is. And they got into the debate about trans athletes and should biological males be competing with biological females. And Piers, and I generally like Piers, sometimes I don't, but he's, you know, kind of basically okay at this point. Watch him just dissect her or fillet her like a fish. He should be able to have a civil debate. Nobody, including Riley Gaines, who I disagree with strongly, should be should What do you physically, disagree with out of interest? Um, I, I think that it should be up to sporting bodies to make their decisions about who but and how she should compete. What has she said compete. that's actually wrong? I think that what she has done is try to turn this... We talked about people you know, becoming using things to kind of get likes and get clicks. That's not what she's doing. 
It's I mean, not? I, I've got no truck for right against games personally, but all I've seen her do is stand up for women's rights to fairness and equality. Well, she, has she, she actually competed oh. against Leah Thomas, and it was obviously unfair. Leah Thomas won one of the races in the NCAA championships by 50 seconds against a bunch of biological females who simply couldn't keep up. That cannot be right. It cannot be fair. That is something that I trust, I think our sporting bodies should be dealing with. And by the way, Riley is speaking up for herself and that is her prerogative and I respect her free speech. I think she's speaking up for but pretty much every female athlete in the world. I Isn't it so interesting, I always tell you guys how progressives, there's this thin veneer of tolerance and diversity, but right beneath that, you usually find an authoritarian, but the other thing you might find is just someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. And that's exactly what Katie Porter is, right? Pierce is just saying the basic truth. And we all know it's the basic truth. We get caught in this argument all the time, but biological men, generally speaking, are stronger and bigger and more athletic than biological women. And that's why this whole thing has burst forth because we are watching male wrestlers beat the crap out of women. We are watching male swimmers crush every female swimming record. And it's the feminists, the supposed people who are for women who are defending it. It is completely insane. Piers, because he's just telling the truth, is fairly calm as he's saying it. And you can see she sort of just is slowly admitting through her gibberish that she doesn't know what she's saying. It should be left up to the sporting bodies. Oh, so if the sporting bodies decided to get rid of the trans swimmers, you'd be for that? Well, what kind of position is that? Is that a principled position? Like, what actually are you saying? And that Riley Gaines, Riley Gaines, the incredible female swimmer, uh, who again, lost to Leah Thomas by 50 seconds, although it was here in Florida and Ron DeSantis actually made sure that she got the, the gold, uh, that she's just doing this for clicks and likes. She's put her, her life into this. She's a young woman who's put everything she has into becoming the best swimmer she could possibly be is basically at the apex of that as a female swimmer and is getting crushed by a guy with a penis. Leah Thomas has a penis. And as Connor has often noted, it is possible that he is using the penis to his advantage during swimming because it acts as a propeller. We haven't checked the science on that, but Connor said it and I'm just repeating it, okay? So that was the Connor theory. That's what we're gonna call that for now on. Anyway, Porter doesn't know what she's saying. Piers just, you know, fillets her nice and easily. And here's Bill Maher jumping in. And once again, Bill Maher taking the sane liberal position, which is completely at odds with the insane progressive position. Wasn't that, wasn't that the point of Title IX? Title IX in the early 70s was yeah. something that was, uh, it was a major event in feminism that we finally have this law that says at colleges, right? And I think high schools too, but definitely colleges, women, women's sports have to be given equal to men's sports so that women aren't get, you know, and this led to the WNBA and lots of other stuff. This seems to be the opposite of that. It seems to be so many instances, I think, where wokeness is the opposite of what I grew up as liberals. Right. Liberalism uh, was let's give uh, the women an equal shot. And meanwhile, this is let, let's meanwhile, put a male in the in the swimming pool right, with the women. I don't get it. It's crazy. And meanwhile, trans people who genuinely want to compete at athletics and swimming or whatever it may be, they they're the ones who are suffering here. They need to be found a way to compete fairly and justly. Well, what's your answer then? I think there's one or two answers. I think they either compete against their biological sex, as many of them did before, or you create an entirely new category for a transgender athlete. And then they're able to compete fairly. But what you cannot do is continue to allow more and more trans athletes to start decimating women's records. It, in some cases, irrevocably. It's just not fair. Okay, I got it. It's just so great. Before I address Bill, I mean, Piers really did a great job here. He thought this through. They, you know, they give you the topics before you do a show like that. And it seems fairly obvious to me that Katie Porter, because she did what a progressive does, they think they can just go on these shows and say things. And the implication is if you're against me, you're somehow a bigot or a transphobe or something so that no one will ever push back. But again, he calmly, when she says, well, what would you do? Okay, well, there's two things we can do. What are those two things? Trans people can uh, have their own separate league against trans people, so be it. And if I don't know how many people will be in that league, but okay. Or you go against the people of your biological sex. Congratulations. And then as he's saying calmly what we all know to be true, you can see she's kind of like this, but she has nothing to say. 
So now, as far as Bill, now Bill, once again, yes, you are right, Bill. Woke has nothing to do with liberalism, but the party that you support, the Democrat Party, is the party that is ushering in wokeness and destroying your very precious liberalism. I'll send you another copy of my first book. You might enjoy it. So the question is, how is it that two liberals, Bill Maher and Piers Morgan, how is it that they are diametrically opposed to this Democrat? She represents what the Democrat Party is. Give me a Democrat, a mainstream Democrat, who would argue the sanity that Bill Maher and Piers Morgan are arguing. Arguing There, there are none. There are none. The, the mainstream Democrat Party positions have completely alienated common sense, rationality, reality, and, and the decent American citizen. But how does that happen? Well, as you know, politics is downstream from culture. So what has culture been doing to us? Uh, well, here's a tweet from OutKick. I don't watch Saturday Night Live, so I did see this on the Twitter. Instead of comedy, SNL embraces full-blown activism. A non-binary cast member appeared on Weekend Update last night to advocate for gender transitions for minors. Well, ladles and jelly spoons, we've got video of the purported comedy show Saturday Night Live uh, doing just that. I was going to say enjoy, but I don't see how you're going to be able to. Since the start of this year, over 400 anti-LGBTQ bills have been introduced across the country, many of which directly <laughs> target trans youth. Here to talk about it is someone with their own introduction. <laughs> Introducing SNL's first non-binary cast member, it's Molly Carney! <laughs> Jay. Molly, what is all this? Well, as you know, I've been wanting to come to Update and talk about trans people, but I have for a much longer time than that wanted to fly down from the ceiling. <laughs> Listen to that, Michael. Yeah. Restricting health care for kids. For some reason, there's something about the word trans that makes people forget the word kids. If you don't care about trans kids' lives, it means you don't care about frickin' kids' lives. Wow, Molly. <laughs> You know, at one point, I heard a crew guy say, is she gonna die up there? <laughs> and then another guy was like, you mean, are they going to die up there? <laughs> and then they both walked away and didn't help. <laughs> Which feels a lot like how trans people are being treated right now. Hey, Mr. J, am I still in the frame? I mean, your feet are. <laughs> nice. Trans rock! Uh, NPC, non-playable character. That's what everyone in that audience applauding. They don't even know what they're applauding. There's nothing funny about it. By the way, this woman, she's a woman. I, I don't care if she identifies as non-binary. I'm not even sure what that means. And she can go about her life living however she wishes. But everyone watching that knows she's a chick, right? She's a chick. She's a low-grade Melissa McCarthy. That's all. But she is a woman. So if she identifies as a man and a woman, that... Okay, go do that. But why are you pushing this stuff on kids once again? Of course, the host there, he uh, intros the segment, intros her by saying that there are more than 400 anti-LGBT bills. I mean, there's just no such thing. There are bills that are trying to protect youth from having their genitals chopped off, which is something that we all would have agreed on 10 years ago. By the way, at this point, I think it's fair to say that if you are pro-trans when it comes to kids, meaning you are for them going on hormone blockers and having their breasts cut off and, and all the rest of it, you're actually anti-gay. So it's not anti-LGBT because a certain set of these kids will just turn out to be gay kids, meaning it is a young girl who's probably a tomboy and maybe would grow up, maybe is the key part, would grow up just to be a lesbian, an old fashioned rugby playing Ellen DeGeneres style lesbian, or it might be an effeminate gay boy who might grow up to be uh, hopefully a functional adult gay man. And you are the ones that are, that are literally abusing them, literally. But this is what they do. They push, so they lie about the intro. There are four, it makes the average person watching that go, my God, there are 400 anti-LGBT bills. Listen, I live in Florida. I live in Florida. Everything is just fine here. Actually, we did have one incident this weekend. I don't know if you saw it. I put it on Twitter, but uh, 
we heard a crash in the backyard. This is a little sidebar. We heard a crash in the backyard as we were in the pool yesterday and uh, an iguana fell out of a tree. Did you guys see this? Clyde got into a huge fight with the iguana, blood flying all over the place. Anyway, I separate them. The iguana ends up chilling out in the pool. I think the salt water might've healed him up. St stayed in there for about an hour. Clyde was freaking out. It all worked out. The point is that's the worst of what's going on here in Florida. Okay, that was a hell of a segue. Uh, everything else is fine. They're not coming for gay people or anything else. And these people are just liars and frauds. And that girl is a girl. You can call yourself whatever you want. You're still a chick. Okay. She also looks like Katie Porter, which is hilarious. She was really making the rounds this weekend. Anyway, so what do you do? Because mainstream Democrat culture is alienating all of the liberals. It's not just, if you're watching this and you're more conservative or more libertarian or whatever, you're going, okay, surprise, surprise. But then there's that same set of people, that somewhat sane set of people, but they're just late to the party and we got to welcome them to party. Sure, we've been partying. We've been having a great time. Everybody's nice and toasty, but we still, we want to go home. You know what I mean? We've had enough. But then they come to the door and they're, they just were at a really shitty party and they would like to party with us. And we have to be welcoming so that they can come to our party. If we have to go out and get more tequila or whatever they like, we'll go out and do it. That's what we're trying to do around here. Uh, but it never stops with these people. Check out this headline from the televised mental institution known as MSNBC this weekend. Ron DeSantis is desperation for power is destroying an entire state. And they used a black and white image, which makes it real scary because that gives it like the, the Hitler hue, right? Just absolute nonsense. Uh, redhead libertarian over there on Twitter. Uh, she said, she retweeted it and said, Governor DeSantis, you can't sex change for your kids. It, or, sorry, you can't, wait, you can't sex change for your child in Florida. She worded that a little strangely. And then of course she retweeted the MSNBC article. Elon Musk saw that and he wrote, any parent or doctor who sterilizes a child before they are a consenting adult should go to prison for life, which by the way, is the law that they just passed here in Florida. And again, you must understand to bring my theory together, Elon Musk is an old school liberal. Remember that classical liberal thing I was screaming about for a long time? So now you've got Piers Morgan, you've got Bill Maher, you've got Elon Musk. I think we can throw Joe Rogan into that bucket. You have all of these people. And what are they, what is happening to them? They are being alienated by the Democrat party. They are being alienated by the failure of liberals to defend liberalism. And you might remember this because it's translating into something that I think could really affect the 2024 election. Uh, this is a couple months back, a random Twitter account tweeted at Elon. Would you support Ron DeSantis in 2024, Elon? Elon, yes. Okay, well now we've got something, a lifelong Democrat who, as you guys may remember, has only voted for a Republican once. It was since he moved down to Texas and he voted, voted for Myra Flores, who was the Congresswoman in one of the border towns. So, and by the way, he also moved because he wanted lower taxes in Texas, not only for himself, but for Tesla and several other of his companies. I have a feeling he's gonna get uh, Twitter out of San Francisco. He bought that after he moved. Uh, so the issue here is why are these people waking up? And partly, I think we actually have to thank the progressives. Their hysteria related to the inability to understand basic biology and, and basic facts and reality related to this trans stuff and related to a whole bunch more, but the trans stuff is like just so freaking obvious. It's just handing us, it's handing us a gift and we have to take that gift. And you know what you do with that gift? You take that gift and then you just say the freaking truth and a whole bunch of people will come around. I believe this, I fundamentally believe this. Here's Governor Ron DeSantis this weekend. He was at Liberty University. Liberty University, of course, is the largest evangelical college in the United States. They do something on Sundays called Sunday Convocation in front of 14,000 students. It's a massive, massive event. I did it uh, about a year or two ago. No, no, I guess it was before COVID, man. They, <laughs> World, the world's going fast. So I did it a couple years ago. It's just an absolutely incredible event. Uh, here is DeSantis this past weekend at Liberty University uh, talking about how out of control this trans situation is. It is wrong to have a swimmer compete for three years on the men's swim team. Switch to the women's team and then win the women's national championship 
That is a fraud. That is wrong. Okay, now you really need to understand if we could bring this back to the top for just a second. Do you think Ron DeSantis is doing it for clicks and likes? Do you think what those kids are applauding for are clicks and likes or just basically telling the truth? The simple truth that girls and boys are different. I'm pretty sure you know the answer to that. Uh, but DeSantis obviously is making the rounds and it is very, very clear to me. Uh, De Donald Trump had a couple more sort of insane over the top attacks on him this weekend that DeSantis is the front runner. He is obviously the front runner because everybody, whether it is MSNBC with ridiculous articles like that, or Donald Trump on Truth Social with his own ridiculous attacks, claiming that Ron DeSantis basically has Karl Rove working for him for a campaign. First off, there is no campaign yet. It would be illegal if there was a campaign. Uh, and uh, Donald Trump did hire Karl Rove in 2020. But putting all of that aside, everybody's sort of attacking DeSantis. And uh, that kind of tells you who is over the target at the moment. Uh, here he has given a speech a couple days, uh, this was either Saturday, I think this was on Saturday, uh, and dealing with some woke protesters who, yeah, well, you know how they are. If you looked at governor races, president races, 2010, 12, 14, 16, 18, yeah, thank you. Um, Jews against the Jews against the You got to have a little spice in the speech, right? I mean, you got to have a little fun. Why you'd want to pay the ticket to get in just to do that, I don't know, but different strokes for different folks. Yeah, calmly, coolly dealing with it. As for Jews against DeSantis, like what planet are you on, you crazy bitch? This is Florida. You know how many Jews are in Florida? That used to be a joke that there's a lot of Jews in Florida. And guess what? All the Jews are still coming down here and most of the Jews get it and are fighting for freedom. Fighting for freedom. This is the promised land, sister. By the way, the reason she was protesting was because Ron DeSantis will be, I think he's doing a one day event in Israel, in Jerusalem uh, at the end of the month. It's actually the day that I get to Israel. So I'm landing at like 7 a.m. We're gonna book it to Jerusalem so I can hopefully be there for that. I'll ask him how he feels about the Jews, but I'm pretty sure he's cool with them, morons. Uh, but it's not just the right positions, right? It's not just the right positions that he's taking, that you watching this are taking. It's that you can actually then show people if you take the right positions, success starts to flourish. So check this out. Uh, this is from John Solomon. Florida finishes first for economic performance over the past decade with a link to justthenews.com. And I got to read some of this to you because it's really just on point when they tell you how evil and scary and mean Florida is. The annual Rich States, Poor States report from the American Legislative Exchange Council shows the Sunshine State outperforming all, yeah, all other states economically over the past decade and for net Im immigration, thanks to the state's low tax burdens and worker-friendly policies. The ALEC report is based on economic data collected over the past 10 years, and performance rankings are worked out by three variables, absolute domestic migration, state gross domestic product, and non-farm payroll employment. Florida was tops for economic performance over the past decade, followed by Utah, Arizona, Idaho, and Colorado, and was ninth for overall economic outlook. Overall, Florida is tops in the U.S. for domestic migration, fifth for state gross domestic product, and fourth for non-farm payroll employment. Since Governor DeSantis took over in 2019, Florida has seen a huge amount of growth. Over the past decade, economic growth has grown from an average of 4% to 6% to almost 14% in 2021, despite taking a heavy dip to nearly zero in 2020 due to COVID-19 pandemic shutdowns. The economic outlook is influenced by 15 state policy variables, states that have lower taxes and that spend less on welfare and universal basic income programs tend to have a higher growth rate than states with higher tax burdens who spend more. This is the eighth year in a row that Florida has made the top 10 in the report for economic outlook and net migration and business growth. The state will likely continue on that trend as the data shows that over 1.6 million people moved to Florida between 2012 and 2021. New York was the worst in the rankings, preceded by Vermont, Minnesota, New Jersey, and Illinois. Do you get it, guys? 
if you have a vision and your vision is connected to reality and you put that vision into action, good things start to happen. Not only do good people start coming to your state, but the people who live there start living those ideas. And then they have more money in their pocket and they start spending more money and they bring more businesses and then they start going for their dreams. And that's what life is all about, okay? So it should not surprise you that the states with low taxes and without all these crazy government programs and the rest of it are the ones that are flourishing economically and then people wanna come there. And you know where they don't wanna go? They don't wanna go to Cali, New York, Illinois, Jersey, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Team DeSantis on uh, Twitter put this up. I thought it laid it out quite nicely. Dear Democrat governors, now that your boss in the White House has finally admitted COVID is over, we wanted to send an update on the new Florida residents who fled your disastrous policy since the pandemic began. Without your lockdowns, vaccine mandates, and devastating school closures, our new residents have been greatly enjoying their restored freedoms. We know you also enjoyed a taste of Florida's freedom on your own lockdown getaway here. But unlike you, your former residents are staying for good. Perhaps the millions of illegal migrants you're encouraging to come across the border can find a new home in your alleged sanctuary. We're happy to fly them your way. Team DeSantis. And it's good, man. You don't need over-the-top name-calling. You don't need BS lines of attack and the rest of it. What you need are the obvious truths. And that is why everyone's attacking DeSantis. Again, I don't, you know, I say this to you guys all the time, but I hope you really understand it. When I'm, when I'm doing all this stuff about what's going on in Florida and what Governor DeSantis has done here, yes, at some level it is, it is personal to me because I live here and I moved two companies here and all my employees are here and now I have family moving down here and everything else. So that is true. But it really is because I know that obviously most of you do not live in Florida, but wherever you live, wh whether you live, literally live in Texas where it's going pretty well, or you live in Cali where it's you know, pretty crappy, I want you to understand that there are simple ways to make it better. There really are. And the, think about it, the end there is what the, is the best part of it. It's like, oh, all of the good people, the productive people will move here. You know who will move into your states, you sanctuary people? all of the illegals and congratulations, they will come with crime and drugs and everything else. So it's not just guys that mainstream Democrats uh, alienate sane liberals like Elon Musk and Bill Maher. Of course they do that. They also amplify DeSantis', DeSantis success and Florida's success, I should say, because they show, because that in essence showcases the failures. So speaking of failures, uh, let's talk about New York City. What's going on in New York City? Well, you guys know every day we could show you the crazy crime. And there's another story of someone being pushed into a subway or an assault on Asian people. But we're not allowed to talk about that because it's usually a person of a certain skin color and we don't want to be called racist. Uh, but Mayor Eric Adams, and Eric Adams, once again, was brought on to be a sane liberal, right? He was not the crazy nutbag, socialist, communist, lunatic, Bill de Blasio. People said he would be sane. It was very obvious to me that wasn't going to be the case. Uh, he was on Don Lamont's show over there on CNN. Uh, and listen to this doozy. Do you have a view on why San Francisco has this reputation or uh, even in, in places like Chicago or Philadelphia or here? How concerned are you about this perception that cities like New York are dangerous? Well, we should be clear that New York City is the, the safest big city in America. And that is often a loss when you see uh, a dangerous act highlighted. Uh, that's one of the issues. Yeah, no. Okay, first off, let's do uh, Lemon. You see the way he sugarcoats the question. Are you concerned about the reputation, not the reality? Are you concerned about the reputation? And then he says, are you concerned about the perception? So it's about reputation and perception rather than the reality that we all know is happening in New York City. Then he comes in and says, well, okay, Eric Adams comes in and says, okay, well, we're the, we're the safest big city. Now, first off, there's just simply no way that that's true. Why are all the cops fleeing? Why does nobody feel safe in New York City? Like everyone knows it, everyone knows it. And I'll give you some numbers on that in just a second. But it's also, all you would have to do is just think, okay, well, how was New York City five years ago? How was New York City 10 years ago, 15 years ago? And it was flourishing. 
and it simply is not flourishing anymore. But we'll give you some numbers on it. This is from the New York Times, which I'm told is a very reputable paper by the lefties. Major crimes rose 22% in New York City, even as shootings fell. Homicides fell last year to their lowest level since 2019, before the pandemic. But other categories of crime, including robbery and burglary, drove the overall increase compared with 21. Surges in robbery, burglary, and other crimes drove a 22% increase in overall major crimes in New York City last year compared with the year prior, despite a significant drop in shootings and murders. The declines in murders and shootings last year appeared to be in line with similar drops in other U.S. cities, which, like New York, experienced a surge in such crimes in 2020 and 2021. Hmm. Amid the worst of the pandemic, criminal justice experts said. These experts cautioned against reading too much into the data for a single year. So you get the point there. Uh, during COVID, when we were supposed to be locked in our houses, except we could go outside to riot and you know do something about George Floyd, murders were going bananas. So they slightly went down in New York for 2021 because we weren't rampaging through the streets. Thank you, thank you. And uh, so these numbers are a little screwy, but the point is everyone knows who in their right mind, find someone, please somebody find somebody and I'll put them on the show. I'm taking my family to New York City for all the opportunity. We're gonna buy a nice apartment in New York City and I'm gonna open up a brick and mortar mom and pop shop. That person does not exist. Why does that person not exist? Because this dingbat, Eric Adams, decided to defund the police and, and go after the police and you're not gonna be arrested for jumping the turnstile. You guys know the litany of things. And it's not just happening in New York City, it's happening in LA, San Francisco, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we thought we'd show you a little, uh, couple of videos here of things that are going on in some of these wonderfully uh, run Democrat cities. Here's uh, Los Angeles over the weekend. Uh, here's a bunch of people attacking a gas station because I guess getting Slim Jims over at Target is a little too much for them. Video into our newsroom shows hundreds of people crowding in Arco near Central and Alondra. After smashing the door, dozens of looters flooded into the store, grabbing anything they could. L.A. Sheriff's deputies tell us there were thousands of dollars worth of merchandise stolen and a thousand more in damages. This as deputies deal with numerous street takeovers throughout the city. Deputies say they couldn't intervene because of safety concerns as they were very outnumbered. Only one arrest was. <laughs> the guy taking the condoms. Did you see that at the end? He's just grabbing all the. Hey, I'll take the ribs. I'll take the lambskin. I'll take the black one. Give me the condoms. As if anyone's having sex with that guy. Like, what are they doing? You're breaking. Just everything being equal. If you're one of these looters, what are you doing? Why are you breaking into a gas station? Literally, let me get Doritos and sugar free Red Bull. Go to Target like you usually do. You might, you might walk out of there with the television. What are you doing at a gas station? Really think, of, I'd like a keychain. Some windshield wiper fluid. You go to Target. They have everything. They got kids toys. You can get the newest transformer. You can get a basketball. <sighs> Idiots. All right, so that's Los Angeles. Why a mob would be, guys, you want to break into a gas station? It just sounds so idiotic. But here's Chicago. And now Chicago, plenty of people got killed this weekend, but we're just going to show you a general chaos. And remember, they have a new mayor. This is not Lori Lightfoot, but they got someone even more radically left than Lori Lightfoot, which shows you that, uh, you know, there really is no end to this thing. Here's just general chaos of Chicago. <laughs> Can you imagine being the one cop who just drove down the street in the middle of that thing? Like, oh, I was just looking for a donut shop. <laughs> I, I, I'm not here to stop you guys. Sorry. Uh, what can I do to help? I mean, it's just utter mayhem. It, it looks like the Rubin family Thanksgiving out there. I mean, it's just chaos. 
But this is what they want, and they will just get more of it. You must understand, they will just get more of it. Uh, by the way, Walmart announced that they are closing one of their main stores in Chicago over the weekend, and there were protests against Walmart. So Walmart was like, you know, we've just about had it with all the criminal looting and the stealing of all the stuff and nothing's safe here and we can't get people to work for us. We've got to go. They protest saying Walmart's racist and they don't want to be around. And then they burn down the city. These people are out of control, guys. So what do you do? How about I give you a couple suggestions? I got five of them for you today. You know what? One thing you could do is you could strengthen the culture and the family within your own community. Every single one of us can do this. Do you remember this video? This is back in 2015 during the Freddie Gray riots. Now, I know we have riots every uh, so often, sometimes for no good reason, like in Chicago. Uh, but this is a spectacular moment from Baltimore during the riots when one mother got out there and she just laid it out on her son for being a lawless hooligan. Take a look. Captivated by a Baltimore mother reading the riot act to her 16-year-old son. <laughs> to remove him from the riot. We now know her name is Toya Graham, and she's a single mom of five girls and a boy. There you go, Toya. So that's one thing you could do, right? You could try to parent a little bit better. You could try to be involved in your kids' lives a little bit more so they're not eager to say, tear down a statue that they know nothing about or burn down a city or take all of the, <laughs> can they, Slim Jim, what else do they have in gas stations these days? You're getting your Slim Jim, your sugar-free Red Bull, your keychains. Give me one more good thing you'd get only at a gas station. Juicy fruit. What? Juicy fruit. Juicy fruit gum, okay? You can only get it at gas stations apparently. So that's one thing you could do. You could be involved in your kid's life. You know what another thing you could do, number two here? You could pursue and expose the truth, that's something you could do. That's something we try to do over here. And tonight, uh, by the way, Elon Musk will be on Tucker Carlson. Uh, they've released some previews of that and uh, he started talking about what it is like to pursue and expose the truth. The degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. Okay, so obviously a lot more is going to come out of this. For those of you that are not on Twitter, you may not know the DM is the direct message. That's supposed to be private, right? So if I follow somebody and they follow me, I can communicate them. You can message them back and forth, in essence, like sending an, a private email to somebody. We are now finding out it's not just that they were shadow banning people. It's not that they were suspending people and blowing up accounts and all of that stuff and, and all the litany of other things that we're still finding out. And there's probably way more that we don't know and everything else. We're also finding out that they could read your private messages, which should not come as a surprise to anybody because as you may remember during the height of the Hunter Biden laptop fiasco, they disabled your ability to even share the link to the New York Post story within your private DMs. So pursue and expose the truth. Good on you, Elon Musk. You know what you do after that? You follow through on your political convictions. We showed you this one before, but it's worth bearing mention once again. Would you support Ron DeSantis in 2024, Elon? Yes. So you do it. You go ahead and do it. You don't just say, I'm going to pursue the truth. When you find somebody else that's trying to do something roughly sane, you get on board the train. Number four, you know what else you can do? You can call out and convince those who don't uh, get it, right? the people that are out there that are still confused about the issues. You can do your best to engage with them. You've seen this one once or twice, but that's what I did with Bill Maher over in weeks. If California yeah. says I have to take shots and DeSantis says I don't, hello, Florida. That's what I'll say about DeSantis. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. He really is. And he doesn't care but, whether you smoke weed and he doesn't care who you marry. Just He doesn't. But to sound like the uh, voiceover at a movie that's coming out soon, shit just got real. <laughs> but like for me, yeah. personally, really, yeah. shit just got real with that. Yeah. And that, that's in my it. mind. Dude, I left this right. place because of it. And I don't want to leave, the, leave this place. That's, it would be very hard. I'm 66 years old. I, I know I look 40. No. 
look amazing. The hair seems thicker than Stop it was a year, it. a couple of years oh, ago. Dave, I don't know what you're doing over there. But um, it was not easy, but it's not easy for anyone, right? The point is you sit down with people who are starting to get it and you start encouraging them to really get down to the end of the road or at least as the road forks, go that way a little bit. Let's see what happens over there. But it's not just those on the left we should be talking to and having to call out. When people on the right have made serious mistakes and then are, are uh, I would say, unfairly attacking people for things that they themselves have done, you should call out that too. And I know this is going to get a lot of the trolls and bots pissed at me, but uh, here's President Trump making a whole bunch of mistakes. But there are many states out there that are looking at this and they're reviewing it and they're saying, we shouldn't be even included in this. You know, there are some that want to open up almost now. Now, if we disagree with it, we're not going to let them open. We're not going to let them open. If some governor said, you know, has a lot of problems, a lot of cases, a lot of death, and they want to open early, we're not going to let it happen. Okay, so I'm not doing that to be an over the, attack, over the top attack on Trump, but the point is he made mistakes along the way too. And all of us that can accept that some mistakes can be made and people vote the wrong way and all of that, we have to put this on the side and go straight through. And you go straight through with a little bravery and a little honesty and uh, a little righteous indignation. You know what number five is? Don't bend the knee for political correctness. If 15 years ago when this stuff was really bubbling up, or even 10 years ago when this stuff was bubbling up, if more of us had just said, no, 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 something really bad is happening here. Now, there were a whole bunch of us. There really were. I mean, it's what put me on the map. It's what put Jordan Peterson on the map. It's what put Ben Shapiro on the map. There was a whole bunch of us going, this political correctness thing, something, something ain't right. And I'm not saying we all started. There were people that were doing it before us. But if more of us had really thought about what this could rot on society, what this could unearth, I think we could have stopped a lot of that. So do not give in to this politically correct monster. Your, your silence is what feeds the beast. Here's comedian Steve Harvey talking to Jerry Seinfeld about political incorrectness. The problem with any joke is, no matter what joke I tell, it could offend someone. All right. I've been in a club one night and I was doing a joke about a dude driving drunk. The whole room laughed. Lady came up to me after the show was over, crying her eyes out. Yeah. I came in here to have a good time. I lost my child to a right. drunk driver. Right. And here you are bringing it up again. How insensitive can you be? Right. Well, damn, I didn't know you was here. <laughs> Probably still would have did it. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes you have to sacrifice one for the many. The rest of us, like you say, need the humor to get through our day. So find some humor in all of this stuff. It's what I'm trying to do here every day. It'll keep you sane. And then the more that they go crazy, and if you think it's weird now that they want to chop kids' genitals off, God only knows what these people will be trying for in five years. But they will not stop. But another, another path is being forged right now. You really can feel it, guys. I'm not for progressing for the sake of progress, right? That's what progressives are for. But we are at a really interesting fork right now. The old world, the old media structure, the old way of politics, all of that stuff is dying. And there's a new set of people, whether they're technologists like Elon Musk, whether they're politicians like Ron DeSantis, whether there's maybe, maybe they're media people like me, whether they're trying to usher in the new world and we all gotta get on board that thing. It doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. As a matter of fact, the beauty of that thing is you don't have to agree on everything. But trust me guys, if we get on board that thing, we can get through this thing. That's where I'm at. I suspect and hope you are with me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is Meme Monday over at the Rubin Report Locals community. Here's the one I put up. Uh, Democrats in 2020, make everyone stay home. Democrats in 21, make everyone get the jab. Democrats in 22, everyone has to watch drag queens and <laughs> everyone has to watch drag queens twerk in front of kids. Democrats in 23, why won't conservatives just give up their guns? You get it. So a whole bunch of you guys are putting your memes in there. I'll be checking them out throughout the day. If you have not subscribed yet at rumble.com, our rumble numbers are blowing up, guys. We're, we're building the future of the internet. As I mentioned last week, rumble will be the exclusive live streamer of all the Republican debates. First one is in August. So I'll be at all the debates. It's going to be a blast. And yeah, sorry, not sorry, YouTube. We're getting all of them. Uh, and if you want to join us for the post-game show in about 32 seconds, join us right now at rubenreport.locals.com. We leave you with a Democrat with a fake accent, and I'll see everybody else uh, in just a bit.
I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought